Humanity is a fragile thing. The constant threat of space rocks plunging in on Earth and potentially destroying entire cities or even destroying entire biospheres and blocking out the sun and doing millions of human lives into starvation. And to not even talk about the super volcanoes that almost wiped out our ancestors of the map and their subsequent offspring. Viruses and other types of organisms also can't be ignored. A reality we have all recently witnessed. Advancement in technology and weaponry to see who can wipe each other off the map first also doesn't help. And we're not even going to talk about the consequences of climate change. Across human history there have been cities, civilizations, cultures and peoples that have been completely wiped off the map. While nature might not be likely to wipe out the human race, humanity has invented ways that could end ourselves. Many times humanity as a whole has gotten lucky, and it's only time that will tell if this luck will eventually run out. It's quite amazing to think about how many times we prevented doomsday by the skin of our teeth. It sometimes only took one person to prevent the end of the world. In games like The Last of Us, this has already happened. A parasitic fungus evolved from ants to humans, causing the end of the world as we know it. And causing 60% of the human population to either die or be infected by the fungus, making the surviving humans left to fight for themselves. In Fallout, after a war between two superpowers, the world was ended in nuclear hellfire, leaving the remaining humans and mutants to scurry the wastelands in search of a better future. While all end of the world as we know it scenarios are very interesting in their own right, I believe that the most interesting out of all of these is the depressive and hopeless world that humanity finds itself in in Half-Life 2. And that's pretty it lightly. I haven't seen humanity in a worse situation than, well, in this world. And I think I can't explain the Combine's control over Earth. So what is this explanation and how does it translate into our world? Well, in our universe there exists a paradox. Where is everybody? And I don't mean you, me, mom, and apple pie. I'm talking about where are all the aliens. The paradox starts off like this. The age of the universe is about 13.7 billion years old, which is a long time and we know that space is unimaginably massive. So statistically, we should have made contact with alien life quite a while ago. But yet, we haven't found anything outside of our hearsay or something like the wow signal. We don't really have any concrete evidence of there being life outside of our own little blue dot. So, the Fermi Paradox seeks to answer these questions, and there is one resolution that could answer these questions. The Great Filter. The Great Filter is pretty simple. If we pass it, then it's pretty much smooth sailing for humanity. Passing the Great Filter could just be because of our higher intelligence and our way of solving problems. Simply, this could be rare for other species to do so. If this is the case, we will slowly solve our differences on Earth, and unite humanity in one flag, and slowly start to move out into the solar system, and colonizing new planets, and transforming them. We will eventually build something similar to a Dyson Sphere and move out of our own solar system. This would eventually lead humanity to other stars, colonizing their planets and transforming them. Basically, creating a galactic empire. Well, for now, this is just more fiction than anything else. This would be the best future for humanity. Now, the darker alternative to this is that the Great Filter is ahead of us and it's catching up to us. Reasons for us not passing the barrier could be the failure of humanity to find common ground and unite under one flag, and the subsequent escalation of global conflicts into nuclear war, sending us back to the Stone Age. Or humanity simply not reaching the technological capacity and complexity to escape our own planet, and find a suitable planet outside of our own solar system to prevent our entire species being cooked alive by the sun expanding just before it dies. If this is the case, humanity has a lot to worry about. But for today, I want to explore one aspect of the Fermi Paradox that hasn't been explored that much. What if there is a species that has advanced far beyond the Great Filter, and now dominates not only their own solar system, galaxy, universe, but has a literal multi-dimensional space empire? The Combine. The Combine might be the answer to the Great Filter. A civilization advances, defends a new technology, and attracts the wrath of a far more powerful and intelligent civilization. That seeks to assimilate intelligent life into their ranks by manipulating them in various ways, like bioengineering, invasive surgery, twisting them into the Combine's pursuit of horrific and cruel perfection. The limited knowledge we do have of the Combine is that all sins were once independent and intelligent living beings that had their own worlds and societies that they lived in. These worlds have been lost a long time ago through their respective common occupation and extraction of resources. These species have now been converted into synths and now integrated into the Combine's vast empire. The Crab Synth, Dropship, Gunship, Hunter, Mortar Synth, Shield Scanner, and the Strider were all organic creatures that the common enslaved and perverted. In fact, after a fight between Dog and Strider, it can be seen that it has a brain and some internal organs left. This just shows that this could have been once an intelligent species that had their own unique societies and worlds, but now are just mindless drones doing whatever the Combine Overwatch tells them to do. With the assimilation of vast quantities of all sorts of creatures that have been augmented with powerful weaponry, the Combine can mass a large and powerful army that can conquer large swaths of land with tremendous speeds. 
After the Black Mesa incident and the death of the Nylon by Gordon Freeman, the death of the Nylon was to sever the rift between Earth and Zen and stop the alien invasion, but in reality, this only caused the rift to destabilize and cause massive and destructive portal storms across Earth. The subsequent space-time disruption caused by the storms would eventually be caught by the Combine, that would use the rift to invade Earth from all over the planet and in terrifying swiftness conquer the entire planet in just 7 hours. 7 hours. You could just go to your job in the morning and come home to have to embrace and accept the Combine's rule. And if you get a good night's sleep, you could wake up to an entirely different world that you went to sleep to. The reality of the Combine's advanced technology and the access to its various types of creatures it converted and its ability to completely annihilate an entire planet in just 7 hours is what really terrifies me. How do you even start to combat a force like that? Well, you know, you can't. Humanity was not the first to fall to the Combine. We know that the Vorgons also had their home invaded but found refuge in Zen. But were then enslaved by the Nylons. The Nylons' home world was also invaded by the Combine. He states that he's the last of his kind, making me believe that the Combine wiped out its species because they were deemed too powerful to control, unlike the humans and Vortigons. Every planet the Combine controls, they slowly start to drain the planet's resources. This can be seen by the drained oceans and lakes in Half Life 2. This in turn destroys the planet's wildlife and ecosystem, slowly making the Earth uninhabitable for human life. Rather than saving the wildlife that was already on the brink after the invasive Zen creatures destroyed most of them, the Combine simply doesn't see use for them, rather letting them go extinct than preserving them, and mainly focusing on the more useful humans. The Combine from the start make it pretty obvious that they only care about the useful species. So don't expect animals like giraffes, elephants and rhinos to be around for long after the Combine's invasion. Oh. Most notably, birds seem to be still around, most likely because they can fly away from Zenian threats and are able to migrate large distances at a relatively fast pace. This could be the reason why you don't see any other wildlife in Half-Life 2. They are either in the sky or are being hunted by invasive Zen creatures. While doing all this, the Combine built various structures like the Citadel and converting high security prisons into massive complexes of people that are held there to have information literally drained out of them by various technology, or to be turned into Combine Soldiers. The Combine Soldiers are probably one of the most complex and intelligent forces you will deal with in the game. Well, at least lore-wise. One of the reasons being is that they have soldier training implanted into their brain, and their previous memories removed. So, in practice, they're just combat machines that live for no other reason than to fight, defend, and listen to every order the Combine gives them. Aside from having their memories removed, they are also stripped of about half of their body and replaced with mechanicals and armor. This might give the soldier an advantage because the added strength of having organic legs replaced with mechanical ones is that they carry a lot more weight without tiring their legs and can presumably stay on foot for long amounts of time. If you haven't realized this by yourself, the older you get, the weaker your legs get, and especially if you work a heavy job. There are also two tubes taken out of the soldier, this might be for vocalization and be able to talk to its comrades, and the overwatch at large, while the other one under its chest might be for them to receive nutrients. Where they get these nutrients from is beyond me, perhaps at a station where they, I don't know, tank in the nutrients, but Unlike cars, these are actually cyborg humans. Humans that have been practically enslaved and have barely any humanity left, and their memory wiped and replaced with pure military skill. That said, they do feel pain and can apparently still be influenced by speeches like the one you hear in Nova Prospect. Although it isn't known if this was to talk to the Overwatch specifically or just another propaganda speech to influence the remaining populace of Earth. While the Combine Soldier's fate might be horrific, at least the person that they once were can no longer remember and can by all means be presumed dead, and their mind replaced by something else. The same fate cannot be set by the most evil and dread-inducing form of torture and slavery I've ever seen. The Stalker. This is the consequence of resistance under Combine rule. Being turned into pale, hairless, atrophied and skeletal-like beings that have barely any human features left. Their eyes are gouged out and replaced by cold, cybernetic implants that can shoot lasers. The only sleep they get is when someone closes the plates upon what is left of their face, which is rarely if ever. And the non-vital organs have been pulled out and all they digest is nutrients through a small port, which is just enough to keep them alive. During half of 2 they can be seen with a Combine soldier beside them making sure they're doing their job right. And in Half of 2 Episode 1, they can be seen maintaining the dying corpse of the reactor, and later in a transport train out of City 17, which I believe is the only time they get to rest. Nothing is compared in terms of horror to this fate. I believe that the stalkers have their previous consciousness still inside, and that they perform their duty because it's either that or certain death. And to be honest, if I was in their place, I'd choose the latter. The most terrifying structure in Half-Life 2 to me is by far the Citadel. 
While Nova Prospect can be assumed to be a prison where soldiers and stalkers are created in the Citadel, it takes more of a uncanny feeling. It looks like if you ask an AI of what the biggest man-made buildings in the future will look like. But if you take a closer look at the Citadel, it is everything but human. It's the main base of operations for the Combine on Earth, and serves as a military base and administrative sector of the entire planet. Housing Breen and the mysterious administrators, or Shula Toy and are housed in various pods and we can assume that they can leave the pods because they are seen talking to Breen. But more than being a tower filled with synths and troops ready to be deployed, or being a main source of energy across the world and being the home of the ruling class or even being the main civil oppression, but most importantly of all, everything inside here is just a number. In fact, this could be an analogy for the entire Combine. The synths, Combine soldiers, stalkers, headcrabs, citizens, metropolis, they're all just a number in a huge empire. An empire ruled by an apex species with a collective mind that has great knowledge and strength, that does not care for anything or anyone outside of their own. So this could be the fate of humanity if we're not careful. And with signals leaking into space from our planet and our sending out of messages all across the galaxy, it could already be too late. We could eventually just be another number that has no purpose but to serve. We could just be another civilization that is forgotten and destroyed. All we can hope is that we have passed whatever hardships befell our galactic neighbors. So do I personally think that humanity will eventually fall to an apex species that doesn't care for us and only wants us to serve? Well, no, but I do think it's interesting to explore. We've sent out a lot of messages into space, and Forger is, well, leaving the solar system. So I think it's pretty interesting to explore. If you're in a vast jungle, is it best to call out and scream or just stay quiet? Well, I just stay quiet, to be honest. And yes, I'm saying this on a galactic scale. I don't want that sort of attention being brought to Earth. And that sort of attention could eventually destroy us, as seen in the world of Half-Life 2. But don't worry, I'm probably just paranoid. Anyway, uh, have a good night, sleep well!